Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Roll call. Director Thurlow. Here. Director Brand. Here. Director Geis. Here. Uh, announced that the meeting is being recorded. Uh, approval of the minutes from 324 and 413. We didn't do that at the last meeting. No, so we, we didn't have a copy of them. The 324 us. minutes, what we had was that, yeah, um, either, I don't know if I forgot to forward the copy or if um, it just got lost, but what I did what I did right now is I resent a copy of those just for just for the sake of doing so um, to both of you it's not showing up in my sent box but well I had a copy previously of both okay. so I'll, I'll move approval all second all in favor aye aye, aye. public comment period you just want to say anything Jonathan okay you be quiet all right uh, Meet and greet uh, Will Graswich, uh, the intern assigned to Director Brandt, if he is able to attend the formation committee meeting. We're glad to see yeah. you're able to attend. Glad to be here. So, that's cool. You want to give a brief, just kind of overview yeah, of yourself, absolutely. your experience? Um, I'm Will Graswich. Um, works in, I guess, government government style um, jobs for most of my life. Um, in high school, I was an intern for the Constituent Affairs Department of the Mayor of Sacramento. Um, for about three years. Uh, every summer after um, school was out, I would just go do that. Um, in college, I studied abroad in Ireland and got to work in the Irish Parliament um, on their elections um, last spring, which was really fascinating. Got to go canvassing in Ireland. Um, last summer, I was working campaigns on the East Coast for a campaign firm. Um, so I have campaign experience there as well. So, in response to that, I know this isn't on the agenda, so briefly respond. Um, you, and you understand the rules as they um, pertain to UC employees and I working do. on elections. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, and I don't, I don't know if I'm, I just don't say anything. I don't think we should respond. But yes, very much appreciative of Will and the work that he has done thus far. I haven't really assigned him a whole lot of work thus far, if anything at all, except for just some stuff to bring him up to speed. Um, but I think there are items on our agenda uh, later in the meeting where we could possibly do that. Cool. Anything you, any high expectations about out of this internship? Kind of what do you expect? Yeah, so I was really interested in um, local public policy. So I wanted to see how, um, at least that's why I was interested in this uh, internship, is how um, the CSD is going to start working on policy itself and try to push forward on that front. Um, uh, city policy has always been sort of thing like of an interest of mine, so this would be a much more of a localized version of city policy. Cool. All right, so uh, we'll get on, discuss the strategy and potential funding options for office space in the community health building. So we're talking about that room over there, and we're talking about the back room in an informal discussion with the county. I haven't got a hold of the general services director yet. They were in budget hearings last week, but mm -hmm. uh, the party I was talking to seemed to think it was around 14000 to rent that building, and we'd have to rent the front room and the back room, even, the, even though the back room is only a storage area. It could easily be converted into office space again. I thought that was office space at one time. Um, it's a little bit dark back there with just one window, and you could be a little bit isolated. So I think we'd have to think about that. Perfect for interns. Yeah, it would be. It would be a great room when this room's busy, and I think we should still pursue it with the county. I'm not sure about how to secure that lease for free. I, I don't think we could be successful there, but I think that if we can fundraise enough money, um, that potentially they would lease the space to us. Mm -hmm. I had one question before we get going. So the room connects to a room that's right next to it. Um, I know I've been in there. We, I think, all seen the back closet looking right. thing. So, but what about the one that's right next to it? Is that something else? Has well, no, there's the room, then there's the back room, and then there's the closet. Oh, okay, okay. And so, so, but uh, the back room is kind of on the side. 
The real back room. You mean where the closet is? No, I'm talking about the room. It's today. in between the hallway oh, and no. the room. I think that's public space that we wouldn't lease because that accesses the bathroom from this side and that side. Okay. And I doubt they would just lease the bathroom to us. So they want that open for you. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Just clarifying. So can I recommend that um, we uh, put this, we forward a recommendation to the board that we enter into negotiations with both the university and the county about some arrangement which could include um, creative financing where we would uh, forego paying rent for the fir until for the first two years okay and because um, I would say that the the university is in needs to house its interns, wants to house its interns. I think we're anticipating more interns. I hope we're anticipating more interns in the summer. Um, but I also think that the university gets a little flustered when they hear the county say things like, we're not going to give a dime. Yeah. And I, and I don't think, we, we definitely know that portion of the board is very supportive of the whole CSD. It's getting that, you know, the members of LAFCO who went through the process yeah. and got tainted, they got, you know, when they made a big deal about no funding, what it would be the chance if the district got formed and there was no funding. So the board members on LAFCO were strong in their opinion with the rest of the community that don't just turn around and come ask the county for the money. Um, this is, you know, the community's idea and we're not going to bail them out with the general fund. So, you know, but you, we get it. I think we, do you think we should take it back to the full board or should we try in the formation committee to draft what the, what, no. what our idea would be? Take it to the full board. Because I, uh, be, as under this agenda item, I believe that um, I believe that uh, the full board uh, needs to uh, take the next step in terms of negotiating with the university. Okay. And this should be part of those negotiations. Okay, I got it. Got it. So, uh, do you need that in the form of a motion? I think so. Okay, so I would move that we recommend to the full board that they consider the leasing of the clinic supervisor office space as part of their overall negotiations with the university and that they um, seek and that they seek to determine if the county would be open to some lease arrangement that would involve postponing paying rent for the first two years. Motion reads, yeah. um, and then I'll have a second motion after that. Uh, yeah, well, I think we should. Just, I'll, I'll second the motion. I'll okay. read it back right now. Um, the motion is to recommend to the full board that they consider the leasing of the clinic supervisor office space as part of their negotiations with the university, and that they seek to determine that the, whether or not the, or they seek to determine that the county would consider as part of the lease arrangement that the county would consider postponing paying rent for two years. Postpone collecting rent. Collecting rent. That's an important distinction. 
<laughs> We're renting it to the county now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you guys owe us rent. You know, part of, part of that discussion, and we need to remind the Board of Supervisors and ourselves and the university, is that these facilities were secured through redevelopment agency funds. And if you understand how redevelopment agency funding works, especially back in the days we formed this, 50% of the money that came to the to the, to the redevelopment agency came from K-12 schools. And then money came from the general fund, the fire protection district, and um, Kalita, West Sanit Kalita West Sanitary. They were the big contributors. And so you, when you think of it that way, then these are community assets. And when the redevelopment agency dissolved, Legally, we were able to transfer those assets back to the county. So I think in the long term mm -hmm. that, you know, these are the kind of assets that the community services district should manage into the future. I don't think we're there yet, but I think that's, how, that's how we want to remind the county that, you know, they, they, the county doesn't want to be losing money on these assets because I think that was the issue on the board last week is that, they want to keep some maintenance money going to that building, so. But they're already collecting a whole lot of rent from the university for the upstairs. Right. And the university's position is if that's what's determining the rent here, the university would be happy to pay half as much if that would help lower this rent. Yeah. <laughs> and that's their worry is that the youth projects and you guys start saying, well, you're giving that to the community service yeah. district for free. Why don't you lower our rent? And that's what I'd like to get from the general services director is, well, what's the what's the break even on the building right. model right now? What is the subsidy? We should know that anyway. Yeah. That's a good yeah. thing to know. Okay. So um, the second motion? The second was there. Oh, okay. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. All mm -hmm. in favor? Uh, I, did you I, want to hear some I, public comment? Yeah, yeah, public comment. Sorry. Just one thing. Um, one thing, one question to ask the county is like, what the role of the third district supervisor's office is with that office because it is like theirs, but they're not using it. Right. So, what are they trying to do? Are they do they pay rent to use it? Do they not pay rent to use it? Do they dedicate their portion of it to I don't know. I, I, what, what, how long have they not been paying rent on that? Because it's my understanding that they don't have control over that. Their office does not have control over that. It's I, just that general service. I think in the long run it has been a shared space and it was shared mostly with the third district office and I don't think the former supervisor Farr, um, when Esther was out here, they were not really actively using that as an office. So it's been quite some time that I think that that being a third district office wasn't effective for the community and so they kind of just didn't staff anybody out here esther was out in the community a lot and she came a lot but she didn't spend a lot of time in that office you know it was an idea right. a long time ago that that would be a great place for the third district to have a presence in isla vista but the, i don't think the space really worked for them very well you were tucked in the corner the buildings out here were being used a little differently there was a a lot of... Um, she set up a shop on the street corner. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she felt that was way more effective. Than right, than well, tuck, yeah. being tucked in. That's where they did there. office hours for yeah. at least the entire yeah. time I've been yeah. here. So I think the space has just been set aside. The theory is is that we lease the rest of the space and that would need to get leased too. And so, does that help, John? Yeah. Definitely. Um, one of the things that you mentioned, George, earlier was creative financing. Do you can you elaborate a little more on that? Just just things uh, that was only meant that, for example, why mm -hmm. couldn't we pay? Uh, you know, the county is fungible. I mean, you know, I granted it's got problems, but why couldn't we pay for it at some, you know into the future? Mm -hmm. Or why couldn't it come out of the university's share? of long-range development plan money? Or mm -hmm. why couldn't it, I mean, you know, I, it seems to me there's all kinds of different ways that we could be creative with it, where they would, they would be able to 
say we're getting fair return on mm -hmm. it. It's just we're not asking the CSD to write, cut a check every month when it doesn't have any money. Yeah, and you know, it'd be interesting to hear from the rest of our board to say, oh, since we don't have any funding, are we going to take our tax potential tax proceeds in the future and somehow come up with an agreement with the county that we would pay them back you know, 14000 a year out of our first tax proceeds. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it'd be so it's an interesting thought. You know, yeah. On the other, yeah. My I idea agree. was if they did that, that the money would, any money that we would pay them back would actually get reinvested in this building. That would be my way to pay them back and yeah. say, we're going to yeah, make this good building idea. So that's another creative way. So, mm -hmm. so, so we could actually say, Okay, so how about if instead of 14000 we get uh, a donor, a local contractor, to put $14,000 worth of improvements into this building? So when I say creative, that's kind of what I meant as a <coughs> other... But that, I'm asking the board to agree to that. And then I have a follow-up motion as soon as this one passes. Mm. Yeah, so well, before we go to the follow-up motion, we should definitely vote on this one. Um, I would just say that when this comes to the board, I think something that's going to be helpful is kind of a some sort of a document that outlines our options so that it's delineated for everyone and there's no confusion. I know in the past there's, that confusion has kind of been there. Would you be willing to take that on and to prepare some sort of a document with... Um, yeah, as long as everybody doesn't blast it because it's it feels like it's some sort of I've already negotiated it it's you know my intellectual thoughts you know okay. so I'm happy to do that well I yeah. I, I certainly think different under, options are uh, yeah. yeah I I'm certainly think un, under options. the direction of this motion um, that we recommend that the full board consider leasing the clinic supervisor office space as part of negotiation with the university and that they seek to determine that the county would consider as part of the lease arrangement that the county would consider postponing collecting rent for two years. I think that's pretty broad, um, okay. and I think it's something that All right. no, I'll come up with it. I think you'd be good. So we called for the question, we had a first and a second. We took public comment. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, my second motion is to recommend to the board, also under the, under the formal title of this, agenda item strategy and funding options um, to appoint a subcommittee of three members of the board to um, negotiate with the university on the two hundred thousand dollar grant And I'll second that. Would be a, would it be amenable to the maker of the motion to specify uh, or no. to uh, to change the word grant? Is that the phrase you want to use? Okay. Um, Okay, so within this, this would be an ad hoc committee that we're recommending, or we're just recommending a subcommittee. No, it'd be a sub. It would be a it subcommittee. Would not even be committee? a committee. I, I'm saying it's not a committee. It's not a committee. No. Okay. That's where I'm just thinking out loud right now, but my sense is it wouldn't be a committee. It'd be three representatives of the board. Okay. I think that three representatives of the board 
speaking about a specific issue would constitute a committee, whether we call it that or not. So if we would, if we reduce it to two, you think that'd be okay? I don't think the number matters other than quorum. So if, if you feel like it's a committee, the question is whether it is uh, ongoing. Uh, seems to me that the negotiations it doesn't sound ongoing to me at all. The some negotiations with the university are going to be over and done with pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. Yet. Yeah. We're going to let the board determine whether they want to call it a committee or not. I'll just say that we should appoint a group. How about that? Okay. Do you want me to? I, that'd be friendly with me um, if you want to change the And then let the board so. determine whether it's a committee or... But the, the the bulk of the of the motion, I think the important part of it is opening negotiations with the university on yes. the two hundred thousand dollar grant. Yes. So the board president has sent the letter to the university, um, essentially and beginning the dialogue. Right. Um, do you know if there's been any follow up? Yeah, he's he's received a response. Okay. Okay. Do you know. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let, let him report that at the yeah, next board meeting. Then. It went to him, so. Uh, yeah, Bob, I didn't tell you this because it, I didn't want to get in trouble, but I have to leave this meeting at uh, 11.30. I'm hosting a lunch over at Cool. Major, mm -hmm. so. Where's our invitation? I would want my tie. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, do them away. <laughs> we did have uh, Gabriel wanted to make a comment, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, no worries. Cool. All right, that yeah. was a motion, right? Mm hmm. We got a second. Motion is to recommend to the board, or recommend that the board appoint a group of three members of the board to negotiate with the university on the $200,000 grant. Second. Oh no, that's that's right. all, it's already a made motion. I'm right, just rereading it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Any men members of the public? Call for the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Number three is to discuss, design, and approve a format for a document to guide the work of the Formation Commission. The goal is to construct a document that assists the directors of the CSD to use the powers and procedures provided by the Community Service District Law to meet the diversity of the Isla Vista area local conditions, circumstances, and its resources. So this, I think, for our last discussion was the idea of creating some sort of a, a statute, statutory obligations is what you yeah. called it, and is what right. the auditor's office had called it. Um, a document that kind of outlines, it takes each section of the code and says this is what the code requires us to do or we're obligated to do. Um, and these are other things that it either, well, I don't want to say suggests, but these are other things about how we should be operating. Right. Um, and that would be broken down into something that's easily digestible so that it'll be easier for us instead of just having to go through and find bits and pieces of the code, which we've been doing now. So I have a little bit of a preliminary template just for that. Um, it's pretty simple. Um, I wanted to know if there's anything that you wanted to add for it, add to it. Um, I'm trying to pull it up right now, but while it loads, I'll just say I think that this sounds like a great project for our intern, mm -hmm. or not our intern, the intern that's assigned to me. Well, why don't you not pull it up? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then at the next meeting, present it uh, in a, as a written document that then we can share with the public. Because otherwise, not only am I not going to be able to see it, but the public's not going to see this document that's that you're about to. And right, and I had the fair. same thing. I got the auditor template, but I just tried to print it today, and it's a kind of a bulky document to print mm -hmm. because it's it's. Uh, Excel. It's Excel and it has a lot of information, but the basic code sections of the way the auditor one was mm -hmm. was recognized is there's so many code sections that affects the auditor controller, mm -hmm. whether it's the revenue and tax code or the general. Mm -hmm. The auditor's office is organized by 
like auditor qualifications, department of directors, administration, training, finance, and then we went down and put the code sections in. And then we also said, is it a responsibility of the auditor or the controller, because it's really two offices. Mm -hmm. So, but a really useful document to, it helps you organize other things. I think mm -hmm. what would get added to this document, let me just give you an example of administrative services. You know, there's a code section for preparing a strategic plan, and there's a code section for maintaining storage facilities for archive documents, you're gonna maintain them seven years and stuff. But there isn't necessarily a, a, um, a code section for processing department mail and staff, staff that mail function or coding and depositing payments that were received by the auditor or providing general administrative support. That's just a task that you have to do that part of the auditor organization. We wanted to outline those as Mm -hmm. So the people that run an administration understood what their duties were. So we might be able to use some of that mm -hmm. to, to add to the task list as we're going through a code section. Mm -hmm. And then when we're done with all those code sections, we might want to say, oh, for our particular community service district, we should rearrange that mm -hmm. to however our organization mm -hmm. is done. But I think we should just go through the code sections first, and mm -hmm. it's pretty simple. Yeah, that sounds, I think that that sounds great. and I echo the idea that we can add in other things later that aren't necessarily code sections but are just general administrative functions that are it going to be an account like mail is a great example of that right um have we got and how to <laughs> we don't have a mailbox so i hope not <laughs> um but um the way that i envision it is that um initially this document um the, the intern would be assigned to go through government code, um, specifically the section relating to districts. Right. Um, and that that would, be, that would be the first bulk of the assignment. And of course there are other um, codes that deal with stuff that we have to do, like revenue and tax code, right. and other things like that. Uh, but that would be further down the road and that we would go through the gov code first. Yeah, if you're, you know where I put the goal in this motion, the goal mm -hmm. is to construct a document. I actually pulled all that wording right out of the formation law. Mm -hmm. So um, there's some really cool stuff in the beginning of the formation law that are is theoretical in nature about what a CSD can do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really useful to document that and get people to understand that, that mm -hmm. legal theory. Because in the end, it gets to the issues of like, well, what other powers do we want to ask LAFCO for? And that takes some work. And <clears throat> so we're going to sign that. We don't, do we need a motion? Can we just assign that to Will? It's not, so, it's not so, something that you can do. Okay. Uh, it's something that I can do. Yeah. Okay. Um, because Will serves under my direction. Okay. Right. Um, well, I just want I just want to make sure that okay. So yeah. can we have that f at our next, can we have the first draft at our next meeting? Uh, our next meeting be, being May 4th. Um, yeah, I, I th or I'm sorry, not May 4th, May 2nd. Um, this is May 5th at the bottom. And if I wanted to share... Oh, our next formation committee meeting? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, yeah. And if I want to share information with Will, like the auditor's document, I'll send it through you to, to, to distribute? Yes. Okay. That cool. would be great. All right. No further action on this item? Done. Uh, receive a presentation from uh, IBCDC on the mission and goals of the IBCDC and their role in the support of the IBCSD. And then was Jonathan or Gabriel going to do that? He's doing it, but I have public comment on two counts now. Okay. Just because you didn't pass out the auditor controller's document at this meeting, and you sent it to Spencer after the meeting, doesn't mean you didn't pass it out to a majority of the board at this meeting. Did you pass it out to a majority of the board at this meeting? No, no but you will if you send it to you. How so? Because you constitute a majority of the board. Bob and I? Yes. One, two, out of three. This is not the board, this is a formation. This committee. is a legislative body. Doesn't matter, it's a quorum. 
Okay, so it's it'll be so it'll be a document that someone could make a California Public Records Act request of. Right, it is a public document. Yeah, but it is a public. Nobody document. knows it exists other than me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second public comment. I don't believe that items four and five are under the subject matter jurisdiction of this committee. Um, okay. We want to continue. On number four, mm -hmm. well, that's his comment. Does he doesn't believe number four? Yeah, that's why I'm is under the well, jurisdiction it's of this committee. The, it's within the uh, fundraising. So I could actually read you the motion that created your committee. What what is the purpose of this? Why are you doing? Why? What is the purpose? It's not a valid of question. Right. Sure it is. It's a totally valid right. question. It's a pretty simple question. What's the point? Of me telling you that you're about to do something you're not supposed to. Well, we don't agree. I don't agree that I'm about to do something right, that I'm which not is supposed why I'll to. George, I don't think we have to respond to public comment. Okay. Yeah, which is why I'm going to redo the motion if you disagree. If that pleases the board. Committee. I, I don't see how it's not in our purview, but you can go ahead and read whatever we, however we form the committee. So the motion states, to approve the creation of a formation committee with responsibilities as outlined in item 4.2, and to add to those responsibilities financial structure of the district. The responsibilities outlined in 4.2 are issues pertaining to the formation of the district, such as obtaining legal representation, liability insurance, and exploring, exploring administrative options, or to carry out any other role, such as responsibilities uh, concerning financial structure. Nothing regarding uh, fundraising whatsoever. Well, we're talking about the financial structure of the district. It's yeah. not the structure, it's the fundraising. Well, There's fundraising is part of the financial structure of the district, so. I, fundraising I, is the financial structure of the district. Yeah, I don't think we have to respond to public. Oh, yeah. okay. well, we're not, we don't need to argue about this. As long as we okay. discuss between ourselves how we know we're, this is a valid agenda item. Yes. And I agree with both of you 100%. This is a financial structural issue. <coughs> so let's, let's move. So Jonathan, on, are we going to have Jonathan four? do yeah. a presentation? Yeah. I was hoping Frank Thompson, who had just walked by, would find us, but if he walked off. I just texted him. He's, he was going to uh, present some information as well, but we'll see when he gets here. So this agenda item is the mission and goals of the IBCDC and our role to support. So first we'll go over our mission and goals. Um, Sorry to interrupt, but are you aware our board voted to inform you that you were just supposed to come here and say that we will come back to them at a later point in time? I do not believe that's what the board voted. Yeah, that's not what I was told. You were supposed to postpone until mm -hmm. after our retreat. I don't believe that's what the board voted. Okay, go ahead. Do you want to like prove that? I mean, I don't have minutes. Okay. I can call someone. Well, Frank, so, sorry, board, uh, for having this discussion. Frank directly talked to me yesterday about coming to make this presentation. He was the chair of the meeting on Sunday, so I trust his judgment. Fair enough. We, we, we appointed Jonathan as a board to be the liaison between the CDC and the yeah, yeah. formation committee and the board for a period of two months. Yeah, the email I got from, that's what Spencer told me, the email I got from Frank as a review from the meeting um, is that we passed a motion to designate Jonathan and himself to interface with all aspects of IBCSD until June 20 or further instruction from the board. Yeah, there was a different motion separately about this exact agenda item, and it was called to postpone this agenda item until after our board retreat. Spencer, yes, it's okay, that. you can speak to this, and we'll go over it in our internal meeting. Cool. Spencer doesn't say that, Frank doesn't say that, so I'm going to go ahead. Um, the IV, so the IVCDC is the Isla Vista Community Development Corporation. Uh, we've existed since 1974, but really 
have been active since 2014 in this current iteration. Um, we have a wide variety of purview and purposes based on our charter in our, when we apply for our uh, tax exempt status. But, and I can, I can read all 10 of them. It's a lot, I don't wanna burden you with all of them, but uh, some of them are you know, to raise the economic welfare, educational and social level of the residents of the community of Isla Vista, California, and other groups which have substantial unemployment and low income families. Um, to expand opportunities available to said residents and groups to own, manage, operate businesses, enterprises. To expand the opportunities of residents, avail uh, th to expand the opportunities available to said residents and groups to obtain low cost housing accommodations. To aid, support, and, and assist by gifts, contributions, or otherwise other corporations, community trust funds, and foundations organized and operated exclusively for charitable, scientific, uh, and, not, and not earning revenue. So that is, that's a mess, sorry. Uh, to do any and all lawful activities which may be useful or desirable for the furtherance, accomplishment, fostering, or attainment of the foregoing purposes either directly or with others. Whether such others be persons or organizations of any kind or nature, such as corporations, firms, associations, trusts, institutions, foundations, or governmental bureaus, departments, or agencies. Um, yeah, so that's our mission: is basically to make Isla Vista better. Uh, here's here's an here's an interesting one: uh, to so to aid, support, and assist. Oh no, never mind. Okay, so our goals right now are to, what we've been working on since 2014 is to support the establishment of a fully operational and renovated community center in Ala Vista. And we've been somewhat successful in doing so and being a big player in that process. Um, but that's kind of, not, I, would, I don't want to say winding down, but you know, we've, we've supported the application of the grant to the county. If that's successful, um, we wouldn't need to do any more fundraising, really. If we got that, that's basically it. We just would want to make sure the community is involved in spending that money. So another goal of ours is to support the community services district in obtaining funds to carry out uh, basic operations and services to the community. Because our nonprofit is dedicated to making sure that the residents of Isla Vista um, have their lives improved, and one way we can do that is by raising funds and uh, giving it to an agency with the powers and abilities that we don't have uh, to carry out things that would make life better in Isla Vista. Another goal of ours is to establish a long-term means to continually raise funds for the community and secure money for Isla Vista improvements in the long term. So whether or not the CSP has a tax in the future, we would still want to continue in some way raising funds uh, in the in perpetuity to support anything else that's happening out of this and be a supplement. So in terms of how we can <clears throat> excuse me, in terms of how we can help the board. So first we have a board that has you know diverse Isla Vistans who have experience in fundraising, experience in financial management, experience in organizing, and some folks who've you know been here a great deal of time and have been very involved. So we have newer Isla Vistans, older Isla Vistans, people from different parts of the community. So we have a we have a pretty solid board right now. So how many, if I looked on the website, would I find the board, the current board of directors? Uh, we're improving our website. And okay, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I did look and I don't remember seeing it. So I was just, how many board members are there? I think Spencer said he's a board member, Gabriel said he, Jonathan, I assume you are, and Frank's one. Yes. Is it? Uh, There's uh, uh, 10 of us. 10, 13 10 or 14. Pardon? 13 or 14. Uh, yes, so we just appointed two new people last meeting, or two meetings ago, but we have some people like uh, Stephen and Tata, who started the business, you know, who's lived in Isla Vista for 14 years, started the business here, Santa Barbara Tutoring, um, and is still very involved in the community, for example. Okay. Art Kennedy, who's been very involved in the youth projects, we have Jeremy sure. Warwick, yeah. who, oh, is he, he's right there. Right? I saw Art go that way. Yeah. We have Jeremy Warwick, who's a local psychologist, um, we have Valentina, I don't remember her last name. She's involved in the Beco House. And Jessica. The student, and Je Jessica Alvarez, who's involved in the Family uh, Student Tenant Union. Um, so we have a pretty, and we have Kent Dunn, who hasn't been to a board meeting in a while, but has also been uh, pretty involved in the youth in Isla Vista. So 
we have a we have a solid board who have a lot of nonprofit experience and fundraising experience. So so am I right or wrong in saying that the original IVCDC and the let's say in the early seventy four was meant to you know put infrastructure into Isla Vista, but that never went along when they, there wasn't a government agency related to it. But then I think it transformed into they did some good affordable housing projects, and I think those were a couple of Frank Thompson's project. I think the most recent maybe was, um, oh gosh, over by the county's affordable housing project across the street from that. Not the county's, the workforce housing project. Anybody know the name of that? The Pescadero? No, yeah, Pescadero Lofts, yeah. Oh, the house was... The, the transitional facility. There was a religious religious uh, facility next to it, and it got into some kind of student housing. The Merton Co-op. Yeah, the, the Merton Co-op. Right. Co and was IVCDC involved in that transaction, or no? Probably not. No. Okay. We that, I think that happened as we were becoming active again. Uh, so we weren't. Yes, we were I think you're right. For a while, or dormant for a while, until 2014. So if you look at the current financial activity over the last year for the IVCDC, have they raised much money? We have almost $5,000 in our account. Uh, and we've raised money in, we haven't done any active fundraising in the last year. Uh, we've been focusing on more the community center getting its grants and the community center having public participation in that process. So we haven't, we didn't, fund, we didn't focus on fundraising in 2016 and 15. And so is, grants for the community center. So the grants for the community center, what were they? So that's the county, 485,000 that they did in 2015, uh, that we were strongly behind. And okay. then the one that's being applied for right now from the state community development department, where we, it's a $1.1 million grant. Ooh, wow. Yeah. So that's but the county is applying for that grant. Yes, we, we supported the county and everything and making that grant. And that $1.1 million grant, do we know the source of that? The it's community development block grant funds? or It's not CDBG, it's the State Community Development and Parks Department. No? It's called the Housing Related Parks Program Grant. And the, the allocations are based off of how much affordable housing Units. How many affordable housing units are in a specific? Um, I don't know if I should say dis. I guess it's a specific district. Uh, so this county. district would be the, in the county, and there are a very large amount of affordable housing units within Isla Vista. Right. Uh, and so there was a very strong argument to reinvest that money that we'd be receiving from a grant like this back into the community through the community center. Would we have to do if we? made that community center into a really nice community center, would we have to do affordable housing as part of it? No, because we've already built ours. Mm -hmm. that's, oh, okay. that's the thing with Santa Barbara that's different, that makes us competitive for this grant, is that other counties would have to build their housing to get their money. We're pretty good on, on it, and it's mostly in Isla Vista. And so. we could program it for a community center, yes. just right 100%. for the community center. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, so if the county is successful in winning the grant, then all that 1.1 million would go towards additional improvements to the community center. And the 485,000 in improvements, we've already invested 485 in that building or this building and that building? In that building. That's Just that the building? That's include in summer. So we're almost done with those renovations. Wow. So, and but all these discussions started in 2014 when the RDA transfer happened from the Department right. of Finance. And that's why IBCDC reactivated was to help be involved, because back then we didn't know what exactly was going to happen to these buildings, or how who was going to manage them, how they would be managed. So IBCDC stepped up, and we did turn in a proposal to manage this building originally. The county ended right. up opting to do it themselves. But then after that, we did a bunch of forums in 2015 uh, to gain community input, make sure that the county wasn't just going off and doing this, and that we were engaged. So. That's what the CDC's mission has been. And so who's the lead at the county, the General Services Department? Yes. Yeah, okay. And that has changed director yeah, right. a couple times since yes, we right. started, but <laughs> it's finally stable. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's, so the community center was our biggest um, 
our biggest priority or main priority for a while. But now that the CSD exists, we want and that there is a need for the CSD, which is money that you know, we thought the tax would pass. Uh, we want to be, be a service, essentially, or help the community services district uh, make Ala Vista better. So we can't, we can't enact a tenant mediation program. We can't enact police protection services, et cetera, et cetera. We can't do those things ourselves. But we do have the ability to raise money. Um, and then my last point in terms of goals is that we do need a long-term way to raise funds. So this, by doing something like this, this would help us establish a long-term way to raise funds because this is a very clear and tangible goal for people to donate to that we can springboard off of. In terms of how we can help the CSD, um, and I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna review points from a document that the board did already vote on and approve that we turned into the fund for Santa Barbara to get a grant to help us do this. We were not successful in getting this grant, but uh, I'll still review some of the things that we discussed uh, as potential options that we could do. So uh, first thing is we, uh, we can launch a campaign to fundraise from IV residents. Uh, we can ask residents to pay the whatever their utility users tax would have been voluntarily, either in like a per month basis, per quarter basis, per year basis, or any other permutation. Uh, we can work with you all to create a list of needs, so we can potentially allow people to either know what their money is going to go to, or even choose um, what they want their donation go to. Uh, we can emphasize to residents the need to have funding to realize the potential of the CSD that they voted overwhelmingly to create. And we can also continue educating them about um, that there might be a tax in the future and why this is happening, why, why we are doing this because there was no tax. So as a nonprofit, we can engage in education about uh, things that are happening in Ala Vista. We can't say vote on the tax in 2018, but we can say the tax didn't pass, but everybody voted yes to have this. We can't do anything without money, um, but in 2018 there might be a tax, or in the future there might be a tax. And then we could organize a very large volunteer effort to carry this out. So door-to-door -door campaigning, uh, tabling in all of us stand on campus, you know, things like that. We can launch a campaign to fundraise uh, from former IV residents and friends of the community. So we can phone bank people and describe to them the situation, and not just the situation in Alavista, which all former residents know is bad, but uh, let them know that there's an actual potential for their uh, dollars to have a real impact now, that there's a community services district. Um, and then we can host events uh, throughout the year that are Isla Vista oriented to support Isla Vista. So at the, in July, uh, a reunion called Return to Isla Vista. So people who are activists throughout the years in Isla Vista, they're having a reunion then. That's, we, we think that's a good opportunity. But also we recognize that some people can't come. So in the future, in the distant future, uh, we can do things like events in San Francisco or Los Angeles where former residents of IV, or in Santa Barbara too, <coughs> bless you, uh, where former residents might be living. Uh, and then a social media campaign, of course. Uh, we can assist the district or in grant writing and apply for grants that are specific to nonprofits only that we can leverage to support the CSD. And then eventually, we want to create a membership model that uh, gives us consistent revenue to help the CSD. And then in terms of, you know, with this work, with this not work, we have, no one's ever tried something like the pay the tax voluntarily before, really. It's a pretty out there idea, but I personally think it's very possible and effective. But in, uh, in August, in a two-week time span, the Yes on ENF campaign, uh, they implemented strategy similar strategies to this, and $9,000 was raised from students, alumni, and general Isla Vista supporters in a two-week time span. So $9,000 in two weeks for a campaign, uh, I think could transfer to even more for a nonprofit slash government that you know, get, if people get a tax deduction if they do it. There's tangible service needs that we can identify and ask them to donate to, and we can have a much longer time dedicated to fundraising. So essentially, we just want to help. Uh, we want to help raise money using our board's you know, nonprofit status, our board's expertise, our 
large board of people and you know people have various connections and um, we want to use our time as a nonprofit. You know, our, our purpose is not to make money, our purpose is to improve the community. We have no goal besides that. So we think this is one way we can help improve Isla Vista. And we're open to doing anything else that the CSD thinks might be even a better option. Uh, we just want to lend ourselves as an asset to the CSD as an ally. So just a, I, I just have a few questions. Yeah. One, do you guys have any staff? No. No. So it's all similar to the CSD that the work's being done by the board of the of, of your organization. Yes. So our grant to the fund percent of our group was centered around uh, getting staff support. But getting staff fantastic. support. And do do they have some kind of ranking of why they turned you down, or they just say it doesn't fit our criteria, or? No, they, they were sad to turn us down. They, you know, with Donald Trump being elected president, they had a huge surge of applications this year compared to prior years of various progressive movements in Santa Barbara. So they just were overwhelmed with the amount of applications. And I guess they were prioritizing things that they felt were needed now in the political climate in the United States. So they went for, I think, things like that more than this. But they did fund originally the self-governance initiative in 2014 right. to right. get this board to exist. So they are committed, and I think we can figure out different ways they can support. And did we miss their funding cycle? Yeah, we're in the middle of the spring funding cycle now, so they're doing site visits. So we, I got the rejection like a week and okay. a half ago. So now they're interviewing the people who did get past this point. In the fall, there'll be another cycle. So There's also another, um, Another cycle, or it's not a another grant called an emerging needs grant, which is three thousand dollars, and you don't have to be at any point of the year for it. And I think that this could, could be considered an emerging need because it's unexpected that there was no tax pass. Okay, so I could see that being a possibility. So then I, I, I guess just for, you know, you guys that are board members of the IVCDC board, you know, my experience has been some confusion when I work for the county about when you have the nonprofit as a financial fundraising arm, whose money is it really, you know? And the Government Accounting Standards Boards is actually coming out with new rules to say, Hey, if you control that nonprofit, that money's got to be on the books of the county. And so therefore, it gets down to these controlling interests and do you have these arm's length transactions. There's also, you know, who really controls the distribution of that money and influencing the other board of directors. You know, when you got money and it's out there, you kind of sometimes get your way. <laughs> the whoever is running the nonprofit group. So I just have this, my own personal feeling of, I want to make sure that, that that those types of conflicts don't happen to our board. That if you're out there raising money and we're all out behind your group raising money and not behind, uh, you know, then you go, well, shouldn't we just be doing that? But, you know, we have the same problem you have. We don't have any staff to do that. And so really it is an effort of, members of the community that sit on these boards that have to make those efforts. And, you know, for that, with you guys having more bodies, I'd say, I, I don't mind the help. I, I just wanna, I just think we have to be clear on the relationship. You know, when does the money you fundraise for us become our money? And, and that, that just still is kind of unclear to me. I agree, and I think we do need to, that's why we haven't acted on anything. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, we want to make everything extremely clear. Right. We did get a check at the first board meeting for $100. Oh, you did? Uh, oh, cool. So we, 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 that was part of the 500 that we uh, voted to give to the CSD. But one thing I could see as being a way to mitigate the influence issue, which I agree is an issue, um, is for the CSD to set priorities before we start any fundraising so that we know that the fundraising is going towards the priorities that the elected board has decided. So the CDC is not making policy decisions. We're just uh, saying, well, 
the elected voices of Isla Vista have determined that these five things are the priorities right now. And as a nonprofit, we're gonna raise funds and donate them to the CSD to make them happen. <coughs> So the, the, I guess then the final question gets to be, it's the, I think it's, it's who's on those boards of directors, your board and our board, and then who has the best chance of raising money? I mean, and is it better if we're gonna go for another tax to say, well, we should fundraise that money to show that we're responsible board members setting our own priorities and here's what we're going to spend on hey you want to continue to invest in us without the third party that's what where i kind of struggle with and um i want to really you know we really want to go out to the board of supervisors and the university as as a organization and say hey we're 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 successful you know we're we're going to move this forward and we want this to be you know a the, the the beginnings of a cityhood you know that's what the when you look at the guidelines for a community service district it's in place of a city and you know there's a lot of services that if we are a really good board that that will grow and the community will you know give us that tax i agree and i think the point about like who's raising the money is good i think one thing to consider is that and no one single entity can do it all. Like, yeah, right. We probably right. can't fundraise in person and do grants at the same time. Like that would be overburdening our board. And same for your board. Like it's hard to do all the various activities that would constitute fundraising. So also working out like this entity can is more capable of doing X and Y. So we'll do X and you'll do Y or something like that. Where I, I think it would be kind of cool that for you guys are more what what you used to be Ivy Community Development Corporation. It's more private sector housing infrastructure type activities that your was the mission of your board originally to complement a mission of this board. And I think we got to figure out that relationship. Yeah, the only thing I would add would be if, if you are going to use the community services district name in any kind of a fundraising effort i think you should run it by the full board of the csd just so we yeah we won't do anything until the full board votes and agrees to okay. some right. agreement or plan or yeah. something like that perfect so yeah we won't act until then perfect mm -hmm. and i just want to echo the fact that there does need to be some sort of a a very delineated uh uh, parsing of the roles um, with whatever we decide our relationship is, uh, whether it's through some sort of MOU, um, I think that would be very useful <coughs> so that everyone is on the same page. Yeah. Do we need an MOU at this point? I, I think we should let us, I, there seem to be patient over there, let us organize. Okay. And mm -hmm make sure that we're really committed to what our strategic goals and objectives are so we can say hey this is what we want you to fundraise for and we all think it's a good idea hopefully i think we should just be a little bit more patient maybe it might take us it, i don't think that's going to stop us from trying to fundraise yeah. right now but I think that would help with that relationship if we take some time to really s strategize and especially get our relationship with the university, our item before this, make sure we, we, we're clear there, everybody's. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I agree. And that's good for us because as Dave mentioned, we still have to have our retreat and figure out more things on our end. So this, not, not, I guess nothing is final, but I just want to state our intention and you know, what we've already discussed as a board is we see this as an opportunity that we can um, help with. So yeah, nothing is final, but and nothing will happen soon. But we want to keep this line open. Okay, so I don't think we need a, any motion on that. Just. Uh, thank the IBCD CDC for their presentation. We can put that in a minute. Yeah. It was well done. Thanks, Jonathan.
Okay, number five. How close are we, George? We've got a half hour to. Well, uh, can we skip down to um, number seven? We can. Uh, consider the issue reorganization of the formation committee from a standing committee to an ad hoc committee. Uh, I would move that we table this item indefinitely. Second. Second. <laughs> Fighting for the second. <laughs> I'd like to let you do this. Yeah, I agree. After hearing, I think, the comments of the last board meeting, um, I don't think this is something that our committee, if we want to uh, be able to continue to be effective, um, can consider. Um, there's just isn't the public support okay. for it. Yeah. Okay. It's that simple. I agree. And I don't, I don't mind the structure. I mean, it just takes more rigor in yeah. the structure and. Things move slower, but that's the way that it's and you, you take our that works. ethics it's class. Designed, that's what it yeah. said. It's designed to move slower. It's designed to move slower. That's okay. Uh, back to number five. Uh, I have to vote on that motion. Oh, all in favor? Oh, to public comment. None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. You want to make sure we do number eight? Yes. Let's do number eight. <coughs> Set dates for the meetings of the formation committee through June. Original schedule, May 5th, May 19th, June 9th, and June 23rd. I think that's Friday at 10 o'clock if I got my calendar correct. Mm -hmm. What do you want to check my dating? Yeah, so. Um, I don't know how that works for Will. It'd be nice if we could have you at the formation committees. I think it'd be a fun part of your um, you know, you helping us along in terms of our agenda and reviewing these sections. Um, yeah, what do you I, think? I, I agree. Do Fridays work for you guys? Fridays are great for me. Fridays are great for me. George, what do you think? Sure. And that How, is sometimes they sometimes they're problematic because I yeah. But um, well, at some point we're going to have to meet with just two of us or something. I mean, some but one of us isn't going to make, yeah. be able to make a meeting. So. Other, other committees have done that thus far. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, at some point, it will. Yeah, it we will thought you'd gone fishing. <laughs> yeah, I will be going fishing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, is this room available for those Fridays? Because that's what screwed us up before we we set it, and then we couldn't get out far enough in advance. Um, let me check. Because I'm available all four of those dates. You're available? Yeah. I think I am too. But May 5th. No, the only one I would miss is June 9th. You guys have to leave without me. I'll be fishing. I could call in. You always say you're fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Or this time I have a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> so the only date that, because I actually already forwarded these dates to Rodney, and he just made, mentioned that 519 is not available. Um, but I think it would be good if we would, um, I would actually make a motion to set the regular meeting schedule for the formation committee um, as the first and third Fridays of each month at 10 a.m. in 970 Embarcadero Del Mar, the community room. Was that indefinitely? Formation on the first? Yeah. It's that's a regular right. meeting, yes. Right. Okay. So do I have a second? I'll second that. Any public comment? What was that dating again? Uh, the first and third Fridays of each month at 10 a.m. Thank you. No problem. What's nice about that is you get the input from the regular meeting to get the formation committee. We have enough time to get Definitely. the agenda item out. And so that, that gives us some cadence. So mm -hmm. that's good. And then if we don't have room availability? Well, we already know there's one of them that's not available. So I have another motion right after this. I think okay. on this. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and I have a motion to cancel the May 19th regular meeting. Um, and that, that's it. That's what about we can reschedule, but if we reschedule, we have to schedule a special meeting. Can so we, can we reschedule it for a different time that day? 
No, regular meeting schedule is set in stone. We I gotcha. just have to cancel that and schedule a special meeting that would serve around that general time period. Well, I'm available later that afternoon. Okay, so I can if we go ahead. Yeah. So the motion should be to to schedule a special meeting on May nineteenth. Uh -huh. Okay, I rescind my motion. I move to cancel the May nineteenth regular meeting and schedule a special meeting at one p.m. on May nineteenth. Can we make it later? Two. I amend my motion. Uh, Two p.m. on May nineteenth. Second. Does that work for your schedule, Bob? It does. Awesome. Works for me, too. Okay. All right. When's the May 19th meeting? Uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Okay. And one of the things, and we can actually, um, I'm hoping soon to update this calendar to include these meetings so that oh, people okay. will see it. Okay been hanging on the window for a while all right. so all right item six. Oh, and we'll wait, go back and five black take a we'll take a motion on this all in favor we public comment seeing none all in favor all right. Right. I think we'll move the number six because it's just a yep. two-minute yep. item uh, receive an update on assignment of fund number and structure for deposits to the county treasury discuss potentially assigning a district board member to do some basic accounting such as making treasury deposits so on the first issue, I think they, they want to give us a fund number called 3380, and then there's about five vacant fund numbers after that, so that gives us some room if we ever want to have consecutive funds. I still need to for, forward the um, minutes uh, to the, the, yeah, the, the adopted minutes from the regular board meeting to the treasurer and to the controller and the auditor's office, and then make a formal request for the fund and make sure I have the title right. Um, and then I've been thinking about approaching the treasurer and asking them if we can open a treasury bank account to where we could do some member of this board, like if Jonathan gives us a check, that we can deposit that at a local branch so somebody doesn't have to run downtown to do it. And I think we can do that pretty easy with a deposit only checking account. Oh, okay. And hopefully it's the business type account where you can actually just sit in your office and take a picture of the check back and front and it's deposited. So I'll, I'll see if that service is available through the treasury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I so that's, that's all that, great. just an update for that. And then put, discuss potentially assigning a district board member to do some basic accounting, such as making the treasury deposits. You know, I, I could easily, because I know the systems, be the person to do that, but I'm not so sure that's a good idea for internal control purposes. I don't know if there's any other member of the board that has an inkling towards accounting and treasury management. But maybe if we ask the board or if we consider a position of a finance director, that board member could do some of the basic accounting. I could help them as part of the checks and balances, but I don't think you want to just give one board member that responsibility. Right. Um, and so that I, I kind of would say maybe we want a regular board agenda item too consider appointing a finance director, uh, one of our directors to be the finance director. Now, potentially not me, but 
Mm -hmm. I don't know if Natalie has any skills in that area. It's just, mm -hmm. it's not hard to make, you know, it's not hard to, if you can take a picture of a check front and back, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And that would essentially be the scope of this position, it would be it's just depositing all checks. All these checks are going to start coming in. Yeah. Well, the first is to be the depository. The second would be we still have to tackle that issue about accounting services. And, you know, in my gut, we want the treasurer to do that. We want the auditor to do that on their books. But that gets to be a funding issue. And so that's the other question is, can I go ask them for free services in this creative financing way? That's not on the agenda, but maybe we'll think about that. I've been trying to craft that with the auditor, but I'm not getting anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I, I have too much influence, so. Yeah, I think your recommendation that the, it sounds like we want to recommend that the board create a finance director position. Um, Just someone to act as a finance director. Someone yeah. to act as a finance director um, to make deposits, so move. et cetera. So okay. move. Um, Second motion. Motion by two. You seconded it. I second. You made the motion, or you seconded? I made the motion. Okay. Uh, motion to uh, recommend board creation. Consider appointing a director to act. Officer. And the first was George, and the second was me. Yeah, I think that that's good. I think we're going to have to have a discussion at the board level about who we want that person to be. Yeah. Um, and who has the experience that would be I mean, necessary. I'm always I mean, the backstop, like but I would rather see, yeah. I think it's a great training opportunity for uh -huh. a board member just to start thinking financially, because it'll make you think about the deposits you're making, what the coding is for those deposits, mm -hmm. what line item they're going to. Mm -hmm. And then when we get to the outside, it's, well, how do we set up the budget too? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's a great idea. All right, last one. Uh, well, we got to uh, Can we take a, a vote on public that. comment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Can we take a public question? What was the issue with auditing? Like, why, um, why do you want the auditor to do it on their books? And why is that a finance issue? Can you say that again? Why do you want the auditor to handle, um, to account for your funds on their books? And why is that a funding issue and you can't get that done? So the auditor charges a fee, almost like a per traction fee. That's not quite how it works. And they maintain the books of probably 15 different special districts. They have a pretty large chart of accounts. They have system reports that come out that fit, you know, what we want to report back to the board. So they have good budgetary accounts and they, good, they have good fund structure in their accounting system. So it would just be that you didn't have to keep that on a piece of ledger paper in the old days or on something like QuickBooks today. And QuickBooks itself, I looked the other day, that's about, you know, five hundred dollars a year for their basic transactions, but it's not it's 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 not really a governmental fund based system and you'd have to ad lib on that. So it's just the auditor has the right terminology in there to to make it more efficient in the future. But essentially we have to we have to go through the county in terms of who holds our money. Yeah, the treasury, so the, yeah. And the auditor is automatic. like the complement yeah. to that, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know how much the auditor's office would charge? Yeah, so they do it on this thing called a cost allocation plan. Depends on which service you're using in their department. If they did your payroll, it'd be one thing. If they were doing your, um, you know, your general ledger accounting, that's one thing. But, you know, I thought it was really cheap, but then I looked and I think I have La Vista Rec and Park District pays 15000 a year. But I La Vista Rec and Park District has a three fund structure, a couple of special taxes, they get property taxes, they get a lot of different taxes. Um, our structure would be simpler, and I think in the first couple of years it should only cost about $1,000 a year, but, you know. 
that's still a thousand dollars that we don't have. So yeah, the thousand dollars we don't have just to even yeah. do the minimum contribution. Yeah, exactly. But I looked at some other districts and I saw where they were paying, you know, <laughs> just for property tax services alone, they have an eight million dollar property tax base and they have to pay a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And so nice it can be pricey right there. Yeah. But would you say that it's pretty common for special districts that are just starting up to contract with the auditor's office to use their services? I, I think it's a good idea yeah. because you, you don't want to create that internal yeah. control structure that doesn't come with the yeah. system. Especially in the absence of any sort of staff or general manager yeah. to do that. Yeah. yeah, this is where this is small construction companies and small government agencies are where you have internal control issues. Yeah. I mean, where people can take a lot of money before anybody notices it. I, I've been it's involved small, with, you know, small construction in the last 35 oh, years. Yes, because they have so many vendors. Okay, okay, that makes sense. I've been involved in a lot of fraud in special districts over 35 years, including Isla Vista Rec and Park District, um, Goleta Cemetery District. Um, you know, it just happens that, you know, if people get their hands on the cash, they for some of it sometimes. Yeah. So I think, I think I've read about it in the context of R C D. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, okay. okay. All right. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Uh so now we're on number back to six. Do we take a motion? We uh we voted on the motion okay. to recommend that the board consider appointing a director to act as finance officer and passed unanimously. So we're back to five. Back to five. So continue discussion about the plan to solicit donations to fund IVCDC operations as outlined the document strategies for revenue for the IVCSD. Discuss and compile a list of foundations, nonprofit businesses, and individuals in order to systematically contact and secure donations for the district. Board discussion? Were you at the last board meeting? I was. Oh, you were. Okay. So you know the board. The board, I'm trying to re recollect it in detail, but essentially my, my re recollection is that the board wants us to take the next step, which is identify the low-hanging fruit, right. and then determine a process whereby we go pick it. Um, I, I would say this. I think the... I think, um, the prospect of UCSB money is moving briskly, although it, it's like any other big agency, it, it can get bogged down. Right. But I do think that we need to keep that, keep in mind that, that <coughs> that's probably going to move in the next month in terms of trying to reach some kind of an agreement in, in funding. So what I've listed, I've, I've listed eight possible immediate contacts, and I guess what we, in the next 10 minutes, or in, you can continue to discuss, is how do we want to um, solicit these? And I think we had some discussion at the regular board meeting that... That's the, the part I forgot. The president would be involved with you doing the lead. Is that right, Spence? I, yeah, that's the part I, I forgot. Yeah. I forgot about me being the lead. Right. All right. And so I think that was to cover some of the big ones where you already had contacts, which right. I think is the Santa Barbara Foundation. and Yeah, so what I have listed here is City of Goleta. Now, there was some indication to somebody that the City of Goleta might be interested in the idea of helping the CSD. So I just think that needs to be um, pursued. Uh, somebody needs to just contact them and say, is this a pipe dream or what? Well, I jokingly asked them for money. But <laughs> well, somebody said that one of their council members, somebody told me that one of their council members said, sure, we can help you with $3,000. Really? So, as that a sounds neighbor, like an option to be explored then. <laughs> as a neighborly assist, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I think they have the same feeling, which is that if we're successful and we're a well-functioning district, it helps the city of Goleta. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think the supervisor's office 
has three thousand dollars that they need to get to us before the end of the year, but they want to earmark it, I believe, for the MAC. Oh, okay. The Musa Advisory Committee. Okay. So the second would be the F Santa Barbara Foundation. Okay. The third is a fund for Santa Barbara, which, uh, you know, that's where we want to coordinate. We don't want you going there and us going there, and our stories are different. I think Jonathan brought up a good point. If they have a regular emergency, you know, yeah. three thousand dollars without much effort, maybe that should be our first effort. We well, could get that twice in a row that pay for our insurance. Well, that's what I was thinking is is that we go to them to ask them to pay for insurance. Yeah. And that that's a that's a pressing need to blah blah blah. So ha, um so this is all going to go to the board for recommendation, but I would recommend that we, um, that I and Jonathan work together on a proposal, and of course that would come back to the board for approval on on specifically insurance. Okay. For, specifically for the Santa Barbara Foundation. No fund for Santa Barbara. Fund for Santa yeah. Barbara. Yeah. Would we try and ask for that for two years funding? You can't with an emerging need grant. You cannot. The okay. emerging need is like a one-time emergency. Got it. Emergency kind yeah. of okay. But then there's the fall cycle, which is due in August, so okay. it's not too long from now. Okay. Right. How much did you guys ask for, if I may ask? For this one or for the original 2014 grant? The original 2014. 10000 You got the full $10,000. Oh. $10,000 is the most you can get. And then about how much? Oh, so you asked for 10000 again? Uh, this time we applied for a three-year, multi-year funding grant of 10000 a year. Okay. So we didn't get that. All right. Put that down, George, though. We should no, 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 no. Fall. for fall. We should be asking for. Oh. Well, okay, so Jonathan and I will sort of coordinate yeah. how we can deal with the 5% of all Um I have Ed St. George on here. Now that's, uh, and that's because at one point he volunteered to provide um, services. And he's also talked about making donations to back to the community. Um, I think the board needs to thoroughly explore if they w are feeling comfortable in accepting donations from somebody who down the road may be impacted by the policy decisions. But as we get into this deeper and deeper, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking we should have Chase Bank be our banker here, um, and then we have other policy decisions here in terms of trying to support local business versus when those businesses have matters that are in front of us. So Santa Barbara City College, w th that is already moving along in terms of they are very interested in, in providing interns. Hmm. Cool. Um, and they have federal funding? Is that federal funding that pays for interns? No, that would probably come from their foundation. Oh, okay. So I think what we need to do is to talk to City College about their foundation, okay. Santa Barbara City College Foundation. Um, I want to talk to the Bauer Foundation. Are you familiar with the Bauer Foundation? I'm not. Bauer Foundation is executive director is John Clark, who is a uh, resident of Isla Vista and a student at UCSB. is is very interested in educational issues, but might be able to help us in terms of figuring out where to go. He's okay. more of an advisory. Uh, I saw where Ophelia Foundation gave money to some. No, not the foundation, but th as an individual donated. Well, there, uh, well, I, 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 I would it was put, Paul. Yeah, I can't put Paul down. You cannot. Yeah, I, I can't. Can. I mean, he's somebody that should be approached. The Orphala Foundation is winding down. Right. And the Orphala Family Foundation is winding down. So there's two foundations. I think right. they're both winding down. But Paul is still making donations. But I can't approach him. Okay. So Got somebody it. else, maybe Ethan should approach him. Goleta West Sanitary District. We got to figure out what I, the last I heard from them informally was that uh, they can't just give us money, but if we have a project that has something to do with sewage. Do they still run the street? cleaning service out here? Yeah. They're still doing street cleaning. So that's something actually that we sh should look at them to see if they couldn't expand some of their services 
and partnership with us. Now, I don't know, does that come under our seven powers? Eight powers, seven powers? Contracting with a sanitation district, uh, district. under our public works part. Um, well, actually, I mean, there could be specific things where powers overlap. Uh, for example, I could see something like they, I'm not sure if this is one of the things that they can do, but things like improving uh, gutters. Um, and if you're improving a gutter, then you're also improving a sidewalk. So I um, think that may be something that they can do. I need to look more into it, but I can imagine that they're overlapping um, places. They're overlapping uh, powers. Well, I, I, it, it, let me, if, you know, if the board approves this, let me go talk to them. And it seems to me that the discussion also could be, so why don't you guys rent an office in the clinic building and, and there's a little thing that says Goleta Sanitary District and it's also kind of your space too and, and we contract with you to answer the phone or something, I don't know, under creative financing. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason specifically like Goleta West is because they're taking uh, so much money out mm -hmm. of this in taxes mm -hmm. um, because of the Prop 13 mm -hmm. wind, windfall they got. But they're a public agency that I think has feels a moral responsibility to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And they've also been under huge political pressure mm -hmm. to give some of that money back. I mm -hmm. could talk to Greg, Craig Guy or just, okay. she, just, you know, Why don't you do ask him. What he thinks. He's the he yeah. provides a lot of leadership there. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's also in LAFCO. Right. Mm -hmm. So, do you know yeah. how much, pro how how large their property tax allocation is? Do you, I, have, do you know? Is that, that rhetorical or? A, I, it's a little rhetorical. Um, well, let's say this: their 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 surplus at one point reached forty five million dollars mm -hmm. for I a think, little tiny sanitary district. I think they get two and a half percent of the base, whatever the base is, I could get it off the top of my head, but I'm going to guess they get 600000 a year in property taxes. Okay. And they're a, they're a municipal district that runs off fees and charges. Goleta Sanitary District gets zero property taxes, and Goleta West gets 600000 That's right, and Goleta Sanitary District operates largely off of their right. service fee fees, correct? correct. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to get too far into this because I'm not sure if we're agendized to discuss it, but I do think that there is a conversation to be had. Um, I know this is an issue that has been somewhat politically divisive in the past in regards to the large amount of property taxes that they are allocated that they had grandfathered in back from before Prop 13. Tell me, um, Goleta West. Yeah. Goleta West, yeah. yeah. They have a big target on their back, and they know it. But it, uh -huh. they're pretty. It's pretty hard to get them to declare a surplus of taxes and shift that money to other taxing agencies, because there's a little quirk in the law that says if they shift those taxes to other taxing agencies, it can't cause an increase in their rates, and they're subsidizing their rates in a on the way with the property they're, taxes. Yeah, they're an enterprise district and they're right. subsidizing their rates. Right. Um, I think it's a bad financial yeah. practice. Okay, so uh, so my re recommend, I don't know if it needs a motion, is to, to move that we uh, take those eight or nine targets that I just gave you. Give me eight, that, yeah. And then I'll, I'll be, with the exception of Goleta West, that you're going to take on, right. I'll take on the responsibility of at least contacting them and beginning the conversation. Can you can you restate that really quickly? And I think this needs to be a recommendation to the board as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, that we recommend to the board that. Um, do you have those? Eight. Yes, uh, City of Goleta, uh, the Third District Office, the Santa Barbara Foundation, the Fund for Santa Barbara. Ed St. George, uh, the Santa Barbara City College, the foundation. Bauer Foundation. Let's, let's call them a foundation, yeah, okay. Santa Barbara City College Foundation, um, the Bauer Foundation, and Goleta West Sanitary Di District. Yeah. Any, any chance Mark Lenahan would, who ran the trustee group, would contribute? No. Uh, member of the public has a question? Mark Lenahan actually emailed me 
wanting to help with uh, getting my CSD I, just like two days ago. Mark Lanahan. And also a quick suggestion for the Toledo West Sanitary District. They might be able to help with parking because that's a street sweeping issue. How the parking works might be. True. How much are you going to ask Mark for? Oh, I, I don't think we should ask him for money, but he said he wants to help figure out sources. Oh, so figure out sources. All right. Oh. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That I'll, talk, I'll, ta I'll talk to Mark. I'll, I'll, actually, I'll see Mark in two weeks. So so see, we're in you go, can, you, can you restate the motion so we can vote? The motion on. is to recommend to the full board that these be targets for fundraising and that I'll be happy to take the lead on those while loop, looping in Ethan. And maybe we should um, write that motion for the full board that has the opportunity for other board members, if they have suggestions mm -hmm. at the meeting, we could add to that list. Yeah, that's a great idea. So the way that I wrote the motion is motion to recommend to the board that these nine entities be the targets for fundraising, and George can take the lead working in concert with President Bertrand. Yeah. Is that my motion? I'll second. Okay. Comment from the public? Um, so, I wasn't able to speak earlier. Um, but if you would care to take this item and compare it to the auditor controller item, I think you'll find the distinction between the creation of a financial structure and the f creation of financial content quite obvious. Thank you. I'm call for a vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank we'll you. We'll discuss maybe some future agenda items while you, unless yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, have yeah. anything. Yeah. No, I don't. Thank you. Before we adjourn. Thank you, George. I'm going to note that uh, Director Thurlow. Thanks, George. The meeting at 11:32 a.m. All right. Um, so future agenda items. Are we on that item now? Yeah. So on number nine, um, one of my future agenda items um, would be regarding legal counsel um, and um, recommending that the board um, recommending that the board consider issuing uh, a request for proposals. Okay. I believe I had another one. I'm going to go back up and see if I can find it. Um, oh, yes. My other one was um, the mailbox um, and having some sort of an interim system for us to receive mail, um, whether that is through a mailbox that exists at this building, whether or not it's through another public agency such as IBRPD or the county, um, a way for us to receive mail. Uh, in the time being, um, because I will just briefly say that in regards to other duties that the board has tasked me with filling out, I haven't been able to fulfill them because they require a mailing address and I'm not about to just put down my house. Uh, public comment? Yeah, I'm also unsure if you have um, progressed since one of your first general board meetings to the point that you now have a running list of media outlets, um, but you're required to notify them for Brown Act regulations? So I, I can speak to that as the secretary because I'm the one who would maintain such a list. Um, what the code states is that um, should a media outlet uh, notify me in writing or through an email of some sort right. that I have to maintain this list. I have had no such media outlets contact me uh, with requests for that. Um, however, I know that um, 
I have been forwarding agendas to the I Love Us to Solve Governance Initiative and Jonathan, um, and he's been distributing them on a mailing list that I would imagine includes these press outlets. It's, the, it's a similar mailing list to the ABP mailing list. Okay. Cool. So yes. Do you have any future agenda items? I was just thinking hopefully that we could bring back maybe our formatted structure to the next meeting just to get us rolling on, I don't know, maybe we just pick a section of the law that's easy to fulfill that structure and have Will work on that, set us a structure and just mm -hmm. have something we can And you're, you're referencing the, the document that we are, or that I'm interested in assigning the intern that was yeah, assigned yeah, to me, okay. Yeah. So if we just maybe bring back a section that has a few sections filled out where we've already accomplished things, Maybe we could use the mm -hmm. like the appointments of the directors, and you know, mm -hmm. one of the action items could be, oh, now we want to, you know, consider a finance director, and then we can have an accomplished column and say, do boom done, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could use that as the first section. Yeah, we should certainly review that document and yeah. take action on it. And then. Uh, um, Anything else we can think of? I think if we just start working through those documents, there's plenty in there to work on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think in the introductory section, mm -hmm. you know, my thought about um, the presentation we had at the last board meeting about garbage. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really interesting, thought-provoking thing about when you get into the formation sections as you read them, you know, it talks about the reason for a community services district is in the absence of a city or before you form a city. And then, you know, Jay also sent back all of us for consideration, those other sections of the law. Mm -hmm. That's something easy that we could, you know, make part of an agenda to say, well, at what point would we even consider, you know, doing you know, garbage service, and it would be two years from now, or three years from now, or five years from now. But I think we should start thinking in terms of that that um, planning piece that's at the beginning. I don't know if we should do it yet to be our first structure, mm -hmm. but eventually we should relate our long-term back plan back to that legal planning document. Mm -hmm. And if we really wanted to go to LAFCO someday, I think we should come with a more completed packages of all the ways that they help us transition to meet those goals. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and I was just thinking about how, you know, how we considered that garbage service thing and it was like almost a little bit out of context mm -hmm. to start with. Yeah, I agree. I think that in the absence of any sort of strategic plan, um, it did kind of feel like out of, con out of context is a good way to put yeah. it. Um, I think that that's a great idea. Uh, the last thing that I think that we should have a discussion about is um, administrative staffing for the district. Um, because it seems clear to me, and I don't want to get too far into it, but it seems clear to me that um, given that this committee uh, is a brown act committee um, and is not able to act as swiftly on our feet as some of us may have liked in um, you know a, a couple weeks ago, um, that, 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 that having us do a lot of this legwork is not going to be something that's sustainable. Um, and I grow wary, I, I feel wary about um, the prospect of us being bogged down because we are moving so slowly. Um, I think there needs to be a discussion about administrative staffing. Um, and then I would think we maybe should add to that especially when we're going to go out to fundraising and start asking money people for money, what are we going to spend it on in our first year budget? And maybe we should start putting together a preliminary first year budget like 3000 for insurance, 15000 in kind for office space. We've got 5000 a year for, you know, someone on retainer for legal services. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can get someone to... Um, 
act as the general manager, um, that would lead to that section where we're going to do the job description for a real general manager, but maybe just like we're going to do for legal services, maybe we should have some kind of stipend for someone to act as the general manager. Um, and so, you know, maybe there's somebody that has some significant time that can volunteer and, you know, if you've got a 5,000 stipend for an attorney, that's more volunteer and you get a 5,000 stipend for a general manager, at least there's some financial incentive mm -hmm. for them to put some time in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think, yeah, that should all be a discussion that we should have. So I can just bring back maybe a, you know, and that would set our fundraising goal for the year too. It would definitely help them, yeah. Yeah. A lot of this stuff is I mean, we can, holistic. We could say, well, let's go for 100000 and have a 50000 general manager, and we'd get a lot more done. It's true. It's also a lofty goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's also a lofty goal. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely a discussion that we should have at the next meeting. All right. I think I got enough to formulate an agenda. Sweet, yeah. I okay. think that sounds great. Um, so given that I've taken a very rough skeleton of minutes, another one of the tasks that I plan on assigning the intern that is assigned to me is um, taking that structure and delineating it into actual minutes. Um, yeah. And I will uh, make sure that I send those to you. And if just I have, I just have to make, get it, get myself into discipline. If I could structure the agenda items like I tell you to structure the agenda items, give yourself my own advice, so that if Will's taking minutes or someone's taking minutes, the, the action is part of the agenda item. I just haven't had enough yeah. time to really. You're talking about in somewhat in the manner that the Board of Supervisors have their staff recommendations agendized. So yeah, it's almost say like. I move items. Or I move staff recommendations of what they use. Yeah, like staff. when I had the t opportunity to do it yeah. with the treasury mm -hmm. item. That's right. You know, I knew that well enough that I could make the agenda items, but That's right. I, I just haven't had time to I do the staff work. I feel the same way. I've yeah. written agenda items and I thought, damn, I could have made that a lot better. Yeah, yeah. It's when just having time to do the staff work. Definitely. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Right. Okay, awesome. I All right, that cool. Sounds great. Um, motion to adjourn. Uh, all in favor? Hi. Hi. The next meeting date is May 5th.